Hi and welcome to the final episode of our series, Patchwork Work Empires. I am Alexander Tsenkov and today we are looking at Rise and Fall, Civilizations at War. Rise and Fall is quite a niche game compared to the other ones we have covered. It is a real-time strategy game from 2006 developed by both Stainless Steel Studios and Midway Games. The game takes place in the first millennium BC and features an age mechanic which advances your civilization over different levels. There are four civilizations in the game the Romans, the Greeks, the Persians and the Egyptians. Each of these civilizations offers two hero units that you can control in third-person mode. They are represented by figures that are considered symbolic of each of them. Moreover, the game features two campaigns. One follows the conquests of Alexander the Great and the other is a fictional liberation of Egypt from the Romans led by Cleopatra. As with the previous videos, I am curious about how the developers have handled the representations of these cultures. My focus will be on the Greeks, Persians and Egyptians following a similar formula to the previous videos. First, I want to talk about Egypt. Egypt has two heroes. One is Ramses II, also known as Ramses the Great, who is arguably the most famous pharaoh of ancient Egypt and he ruled during the Bronze Age, around the 13th century BCE. The other is Cleopatra VII, who was the last ruler of Ptolemaic Egypt and ruled during the 1st century BCE and is perhaps the most famous ruler of Egypt in general. The Egyptian faction appears in the fashion of Bronze Age Egypt from the time of the pharaohs such as Ramses, which would have changed quite at the time that Cleopatra ruled, over a thousand years later. The overall look of the faction is perhaps quite stereotypical, but it is very recognizable and is probably what comes to mind for most people when ancient Egypt is mentioned. An interesting aspect that we have seen in a lot of other games is that factions like the Egyptians or Persians are oftentimes shown to rely on quantity over quality, which is actually not the case here. While the Egyptians are quite orientalized in their looks, they are not diminished in power in comparison to the rest. Actually, no faction in the game has any units that are weaker than the others. Even if you look at the armor that they have as they progress through the ages, they just get fancier and better looking armor, just like all the other factions do. Another interesting thing to look at is Cleopatra herself. Just as I mentioned before, she looks, let's say, interesting. She was a real person, but she is almost mythical in a lot of aspects. We just have so many different versions of Cleopatra in both the ancient and modern world, and we don't really know how she looked like. So she's kind of like a shapeshifter, because there are so many different ways to show her. She is also a symbol of Egypt, which is why I assume she was chosen by the developers, just like Ramses was, as they are both really well-known rulers of ancient Egypt. She is overly sexualized in the game, which is not a new thing. It isn't even just orientalizing, but it also follows a trend from that time, and a trend that still appears nowadays. If you look at comics from the 80s to the early 2000s, this is kind of how she looks there as well. Considering that the game has a fictional timeline where Cleopatra is a resistance fighter against the Romans to liberate Egypt, I would honestly say that this version of ancient Egypt works to show Egypt as a concept. And that may be the best way to put it. They are not represented in a way that diminishes them and are easily recognizable as, well, ancient Egypt in the eyes of quite a lot of people. Moving to Greece, their heroes are Alexander the Great and the mythical Achilles. I get the choice of Alexander, but Achilles seems a bit strange, since he is a clearly mythical figure. Then again, the movie Troy came out a little before the game, so he was very popular when the game was made. So, just like with Egypt, we have two very famous and recognizable people from ancient Greek history. The Greece that is shown here is a mixture of both ancient Macedon and Greece. The faction design is quite similar to what we have seen in all games so far, and they have the standard unit selection which all factions have, and their unit design stretches from the early classical to the Hellenistic period. The campaign, while not focused on portraying historical events, is incredibly interesting. Moreover, you also struggle quite a lot as Alexander, and the Persians are shown as a truly formidable foe, whereas in other games they are oftentimes seen as pushovers who just fall to Alexander with little to no resistance. I still remember the first time when I played it and I had to do one of the missions over and over again because I kept on losing, 
which might be a skill issue on my end. And finally, we have the Persians. Now, the Persians are quite an interesting faction, because none of their heroes is, well, actually Persian. Sargon II was a Neo-Assyrian king, and Nebu... I'm not reading that, you can read it yourself. This guy was a Babylonian king. Sargon is shown as more of a warrior, while the other guy is shown as a rich and regal king. The Persian units, meanwhile, look very much like the reliefs from ancient Persia. Also, unlike in other games, they are not a large mass of an unorganized mob. But instead, just like the other factions, they are shown wearing stronger armor as you age up, which is the case with all factions. Everyone starts less armored and progresses to heavier, fancier and more elaborate armors. Many of their units are richly decorated with gold and vibrant colors, which show them as a rich and sophisticated people. Again, quite an improvement from the usual treatment. You can see that they're wearing elaborate scale mails, big heavy shields, and complex scale thoraxes. The game unfortunately generalized here much more than in Egypt's case though. Bronze Age Egypt at least was still Egypt. While here we have a combination of Assyria, Babylon, Persia, and well everything in between from all periods of time. I feel like while in Egypt, or Macedon, or Greece, however you want to call it, the combinations of units from various times create an easily recognizable faction. But here the mix of armies create a little bit of a mess. What is achieved is more like creating a strange ancient Mesopotamia slash Persian faction which is so uncanny that it is really difficult to place which one it actually is. This may be because we don't really have many popular games or movies that talk about ancient Near East, and thus there is a lack of representation. And when less people know about it, then it's even harder for the average player to notice this strange mixture that we see here. Overall, Rise and Fall is an interesting game, with quite a unique concept of an RTS game with third-person elements via the hero mechanic. While the playable factions are heavily stereotyped and orientalized, none of them are shown as weaker or lesser, especially when they stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. An equal amount of attention has gone into making each of these civilizations interesting to play and also very recognizable for the players that may not be familiar with their history. It is quite regrettable that this was their choice for representing Cleopatra, but it is unfortunately in line with the popular representation of her at the time, especially for the expected audiences of the game, which makes it even more uncomfortable, honestly. In any case, this game is quite weird, because at first glance you wouldn't say that they handle the topic well, especially when compared to modern games. Then, when you look deeper, it turns out that each of these factions gives you an equal amount of satisfaction when playing them, and neither of them makes you feel like your people are in any way lesser than the others. I would advise that you give this game a try and share your thoughts in the comments. And I hope you have enjoyed this series.